This is Duke University. I'm Catherine DeVos Devine, and I'm a student in the JDMA program here at Duke University. I got interested in working on an exhibit of political caricature through Professor Neil McWilliam in the art history department. He sent out an email call for proposals that described the exhibit in depth. And while reading the description, I realized that the show would afford me an opportunity to use both my art historical skills and my legal skills on one project. It was a really exciting opportunity because I did use those art historical skills in researching literature, in going through images from the 19th century, looking at contemporary newspapers and magazines, but I also use my legal skills in this research and in areas of law as diverse as tort law, administrative law, constitutional law, and comparative law. I was one of the six student curators for this show, and so I'm gonna take you on a tour now. Let's go have a look. The exhibition was not conceived as a comparison of two men. It was actually conceived as a comparison of two moments in political cartooning. The mid-19th century, which due to the invention of the lithograph and other important printing technologies, was the dawn of political caricature. And today, which is arguably the sunset of printed political caricature because of the rise of electronic media, the internet, and comedic possibilities that are afforded by YouTube and Comedy Central. One of the themes we explore in the exhibit is identity politics. For example, the transition of King Louis Philippe into a pair. And this is perhaps one of the most perfect examples of caricature in the show because it describes how a person, Louis Philippe, can be turned into an object and remain recognizable. This is Honoré Daumier's Freedom of the Press. It was created in 1834, one year before the 1835 laws, some of the most significant censorship restrictions in recorded history. The image was created to raise funds for Philippon's political journals, which were intended to flout the government and increase free speech possibilities for artists in the 19th century. Another theme that we explored in the show was parody, and this was probably my most favorite aspect of the show to research because it gave me the opportunity to look at free speech issues and censorship issues and to really dive into the First Amendment and some related cases. And one of the things that I think we really hoped that individuals coming to look at the show would take away is that even though some of these images are really disturbing, some of them might even be called vile, they're protected. They are protected by the First Amendment and they're protected by the Supreme Court, which has actually ruled that political cartooning is a form of speech and as such, as political speech, is one of the most highly protected classes of speech available to Americans. Another theme explored throughout the exhibition is current events and the opportunities for political cartoonists to help shape popular opinion through their images. In the 19th century, images were particularly feared by the government because of their capacity to affect the opinions of illiterate voters. Those were individuals who had too little information. Today, we have too much information, and so trying to affect an individual's opinion is really about getting their attention and holding it for just a few seconds. One of the great side effects of working on this show was an opportunity to talk to a whole lot of professors that I hadn't taken classes with yet and to get interested in different areas of law that I wouldn't have otherwise explored. For example, I became really interested in free speech issues, copyright issues, and censorship. And now that the show's over, I'm planning to specialize in copyright law, something I never anticipated before I started work. One of the benefits to attending Duke is that it has not only an amazing law school and an extraordinary art history department, it also has a world-class museum. And being able to do the show was directly dependent on having that kind of facility, and a facility that was very open to the prospect of having a team of six student curators come in and give their take on political cartoons, 19th century French art, and contemporary artists. It was an extraordinary opportunity, and I'm really grateful that Duke permitted us to do it. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.